Hello and welcome back to the Kawadarakis franchise, where today you can see we're looking right at the playoff bracket and we have a World Series matchup between the Chicago White Sox and San Diego Padres. Both teams coming from that one game wild card and making it the exact same way, winning in four and then in seven to advance to the World Series. My prediction, the Twins, unfortunately, got eliminated by the White Sox, but I did say the Padres would make it and I actually had them winning it. And they're actually going to win it. They're going to take it over the White Sox pretty handedly in just five games. The games one and two were pretty close, but they would definitely take it to the White Sox in the next three, as you're going to see. Not one nothing game in seven to six, but after that nine to two, ten to five, and eight to three. So the Padres are your World Series champions, and the backup catcher actually takes home the World Series MVP. If you remember, he actually only became the backup catcher because they gave up on Caratini and then traded him to us. And Jake Cronenworth is your postseason MVP for the NL, having a fantastic run. A division foe takes the World Series, though. Kind of expected it with how good the Dodgers and Padres both are. Luis Garcia takes the AL MVP, though. He had a fantastic postseason for the White Sox. And let's move on to the offseason. That's what you're all here for and what I'm here for. So we had a couple, we had a retirement here, and we have a bunch of expiring contracts with our coaching staff. But we also have a couple of retirements. Scott Bertram here, the utility man at the minor league level, unfortunately gonna be retiring. Didn't ever make his MLB debut, and neither did Brian Gonzalez, who's also gonna retire. Wade Davis, a former Rocky and Royal, he's retiring. J.A. Happ with that head fracture, unfortunately for him, and Justin Upton. That's going to free up some money for the Angels. Maybe they'll actually spend it on some pitching this time. Johnny Cueto retiring, so the Giants who's on one of their pitchers, but they had him in the bullpen. And you can see Hall of Famer Albert Pujols as he retires and makes the Hall of Fame. And we're actually going to start with the coaching staff here. We're going to be reworking this entire staff and firing everybody. We want a fresh start. And that's going to be Anthony Iaposi, who is actually a former Cubs hitting coach. He's going to be our manager on our four-year contract, and our farm director is going to be Joe Girardi, who just managed the Phillies last year, so he's got some experience and brings that to our organization. And we're going to get to the rest of the coaching staff later in the episode. We're going to start by releasing some people we want to just move on from. But yeah, coaching staff-wise, I kind of wanted to hire the manager and the farm director first and then kind of decide what we need to work on around them. Hopefully, we're able to find the right guys that fit with them and get some good uh, coaches in here we see Odor we're on to him we're going to be releasing him and eating that contract only one year six million but we'll be moving on from him Connor Joe unfortunately after the MCL tear just didn't really want to keep him around wanted to move on to some other guys first signing we're going to attempt to make here Jake Diekman who had a terrible season you can see with the athletics last year absolutely brutal but it, the market was not that big like nobody else is really going for the guy and if he comes here he can be maybe a dominant reliever again and we're going to try to get him on a two-year deal uh, now looking at the catchers you can see just way too much money for a lot of these guys i just didn't want to give that much money to a catcher in their 30s all these guys are in their 30s and just didn't really look at this eight million a year for a 31 year old catcher who can't really hit i mean his defense he's won a gold glove in the past but don't really want to. And now we're looking at the shortstops. You can see Trevor Story does not have a single offer. Correa has a low ball offer from the Astros, hoping he'll take a hometown discount. And so does Baez with the Cubs. And then we have Simmons, who I think we're going to take a look at him. But he wants to go to a contender, and he doesn't consider us a contender. Okay, so we'll move on to Miguel Rojas. He does not care about going to a contender. He might actually end up being the play, and it's not that expensive. But we're all we're actually going to end up offering for Carlos Correa first. He doesn't care about going to a contender. We're gonna offer him five years, 100 million, and see what other teams step into the market and attempt to try to get him. Maybe somebody will outbid us, we don't know yet. First domino to fall in the offseason is gonna be Noah Syndergaard to the Cubs on a massive six year, $186 million deal. And Freddie Freeman, he's another domino to fall, the first position player, re-signing with the Braves. He's gonna be there probably for the rest of his career. Syndergaard, look at that, $40 million in 2027. Absolutely gargantuan contract. The Cubs deciding they need pitching. Now we're moving ahead a little bit into the offseason. You can see Trevor Story's got a little bit of a market now. Correa does not have one right now. It's just us, pretty much. The Astros deal is not even close. 
Buster Posey's going to move ship here from the Giants after spending his entire career to the San Francisco, from there to the Nationals. You can see Correa got offered from the Braves, six years, $98 million. But there, that's not even close. And then a day later, the White Sox jump in at five years, $82 million. No, his market is not that big besides us. Now it's Story's market. Uh, holy cow, on the other hand, that's ridiculous. Our first signing is going to be Jake Diekman. He did sign contract two years, $9 million. has a team option for that second year, so if he ends up sucking, then we could just cut him. Or if he's good and we're good, that's fine. And Bryant goes to the Mets, you see. And the Angels hop in at six years, $116 million. I believe, and you can see the Brewers nine years, and he's going to sign that deal immediately. A nine-year contract for Trevor Story at $166.5 million. Well, he's going to be in the NL. We'll be seeing him at some point, and now we get the news. Carlos Correa is going to be a Colorado Rocky. He's going to sign this $100 million deal. The market was not there for him, and I think this is a, a friendly deal for him in, in the sense that it's actually only a four-year deal because he's probably going to decline that fifth year because it's only $14.9 million. And if he's bad, then he can he can accept it and take his 15 million. But if he's good, he could sign another contract right into his early 30s. You know, that's he's not going to be too far past his prime then, and he might still get a good contract. So I think it works out for both sides. And yeah, I think he's a good fit with what we're trying to do. He's still in the age range that we're looking at. And you can see we're also going to sign Wilson Ramos to just a one-year, 3.8 million dollar deal. He was we had an offer out there for him on a while for a while. And nobody else really offered for him, but he will take him. He's definitely a good hitting catcher, and he's going to platoon is the plan. But Dom Nunez, we're going to be moving on from him. Just has not worked out here for him with the Rockies. He's still got plenty of team control. We're going to be sending him to the Royals just for a minor league pitching prospect here, and Noah Murdoch. And you can see he's going to be the backup to Salvador Perez, and that's all I think Dom Nunez is really good for is a backup. And they're going to take the deal. Yeah, that's. I feel like that works out for both sides. We get a young pitcher to throw in our minor leagues. Now we're gonna move all the way ahead to the arbitration hearings, and we're gonna you're gonna see Ryan Castellani does get claimed off waivers by the Pirates. Now we'll get back to him later. We can see we are actually gonna lose all three of our arbitration hearings. I don't agree with any of them, of course. And after Garrett Hampson or his arbitration hearing was over, we're gonna be trading him. I decided after the Carlos Correa signing. We have a couple other infielders that we signed that we'll get to. But yeah, I decided it was time to move on from Garrett Hampson. He's had his chances. He's still got this year and two more years after that. We're going to get Logan Allen from the Indians. And they kind of need a stop get there right before Tyler Freeman's quite ready. But yeah, that was our offseason. Those are our big signings. Now we're going to get to the entire roster. But starting with Correa, you can see again, I think it's a friendly deal for him and for us. Doesn't really hurt our bank account, you know, too much. We still have a ton of flexibility going forward, paying him most of the money up front. And so we could build around him with that extra money we're going to have going forward. Now, another guy people forgot about, and I kind of forgot about, Scott Oberg. He's going to be back. He was out all of last year with an injury, making a comeback on the last year of his deal. He's going to definitely help contribute to this bullpen. A couple minor league catchers we did sign just to add depth behind some guys, we got Stevie here and Kyle McCann. Just gonna add, give us a little bit of depth. I don't really expect much from either of them. Now we got Yuli Gurriel, another Astro I know, but he's coming over. Just a one-year, five million dollar deal. He his market was nothing. Like we literally had the offer sitting out there forever. Nobody wanted him. We'll take him though. He's all right. He's got a little position flexibility. And he Carlos Correa and him, I guess, stick together. Logan Wyatt. Uh, we signed him to a minor league deal. And Robel Garcia, we signed to a veteran's minimum. Same with Travis Dimitri here. Demi I think that's his name. Demerit? No, it's Demerit. My bad. Orlando Arcia, another veteran's minimum right now. Just a couple guys to see if they work their way in an organization and maybe earn playing time or if we have injuries. Nick Gordon, another one of those kind of guys. So we're signing. You can see the kind of guy we're going for. But this is a different one. He's on a minor league deal. Edgardo Fermin here from Venezuela. He can play every position except for catcher. Hopefully he ends up being something. And Hudson Heed, he was another guy, a cap casualty from some team. We're going to throw him in the minors and see if he develops. We didn't really sign too many big names. But let's get on to the rest of the league. Yadier Molina going ring chasing. He signs with the Padres. Robbie Ray in division. Now he goes to the Giants here to add to the rotation. They're also going to sign CJ Crone. So CJ Crone stay, comes to our vid division and try to get some payback, perhaps. He's going to probably platoon with Belt. They signed Cesar Hernandez to play shortstop. 
Now moving on to the Diamondbacks, Matt Adams. He's going to be their everyday first baseman, I believe, which is kind of surprising. And now we're going to look at the rest of the league besides the division. Carlos Santana got traded to the Red Sox. He's going to be their first baseman. McCutcheon's going to sign with the Yankees. Oh, a cheap $5 million deal. His market wasn't really there. Nelson Cruz extends a one-year deal to stay with the Twins after that amazing MVP season. The Astros' replacement, Andrelton Simmons. That's who they choose for Carlos Correa's replacement. Verlander on a two-year, $17 million deal per year. He's going to the Angels. And Granke's going to stay in division also, going to the A's. So both pitchers choosing to stay in division, going to some rivals of the Astros. Chris Bryant, he gets tapped to the Mets, and it's a pretty big deal. We'll see if it works out for the Mets and for him. And another former Cub here, Javier Baez, signs a long-term deal with the Phillies. Not too crazy of a contract, but yeah, they're going to take him, and they're actually going to end up moving D.D. Gregorius from shortstop. He had a great year last year, but they're going to move him to left field. They have an opening there after after Andrew McCutcheon is gone, so they're going to try him out there. Kyle Seeger going to add to that Brewers team, actually looking kind of scary with Mondesi and all these guys they've got, and now Trevor Story, Christian Yelich. The Brewers might be really good, and they got Trevor Story for a very long time. Charlie Morton actually signed with the Pirates going back there. It's a one-year deal. They want to add a veteran to that pitching staff. And then they got Castellani. He's going to be in their rotation. Interested to see how he does for them. It's unfortunate we lost out on him. But we needed to free up a 40-man roster spot. And this is the lineup we got kind of working with right now for spring training. I mean, it's still a work in progress. Obviously, things can change. We're going to be putting players in and out every game in spring training. you got to get everybody a chance. And the rest of the lefties, this is what we'll look like. You can see McMahon used more of as a utility guy. Uh, yeah, rotation. Pitching-wise, we really don't change that much in the starting rotation. It's going to be pretty much the same as what we had towards the end of last year. Gomber going back in the rotation. And if it doesn't work out, we get a couple young guys ready to call up eventually. Bullpen, we only added a couple of changes here. Jake Diekman and Scott Oberg obviously coming back. Daniel Bard going to be moved from a closer more to a late reliever. We got some young guys that we want to give chances out here in the bullpen. Catching wise, I think Max McDowell is now going to be the third catcher. I just don't just didn't see enough from him to make him the everyday backup. And Victor Caratini and Ramos are going to platoon to start things. Yuli Gurriel, we know he's probably going to get at least make the major league team and start. But what about Michael Talia? Maybe he can earn some playing time and make the major league roster right off the bat and push Yuli Gurriel out of there. I, that's possible. If he plays well enough in spring training, I would not be opposed to it. Brennan Rogers going to get to play second base quite a bit. But Ryan McMahon is also probably going to be playing a ton of second base because Miguel Andujar, I plan to put him at third base every day. And Welker, he's more of a wild card. I don't exactly know what to expect out of him after his short stint last year. It did not go well. Maybe with a full spring training under his belt, he can make the major league roster right away. Now at shortstop, obviously, Carlos Correa is going to be our everyday guy. He's the new face of our franchise. So hopefully he ends up being good for both his sake and ours. We had a couple minor league guys behind him, and I'm looking at Sam Hilliard. I don't know what the plan is with him. If he ends up being bad, we might just cut him and move on from him. But if he has a good spring training, probably be on the major league roster. Somebody will have to get booted out. Probably won't be Trevor Larnick, though. He's just in his second year. Had a fantastic rookie season. And you can see not too many changes out here in the outfield. Really only signed one guy. VML Machine, he's more of a utility guy. You could put him anywhere. And he will definitely be on the team after that fantastic second half he had with us. Tapia, the plan with him is to just play him in center field. But Brinson's also got to get some playing time. He really earned it last year in the second half when he was up. Hopefully he can keep doing more of that. That'd be very nice. Charlie Blackman, obviously, going to be starting every day that he possibly can as long as he's good. We got a couple other guys, Marcus Agunis and Ramirez, battling it out for some playing time. Here in spring training, you can see the schedule. We'll be doing that next episode. But before you move on, we're also going to be talking about the coaching staff. And now you can see the rest of the staff has been filled out. We got Mark DeYoung, who's going to end up being our hitting coach, signed to a four-year deal. And we got Spencer Kang. He's going to be our pitching coach. Oh, both of those guys better than we had last season. David Pace at first base and Ken Carmona at third. I think we filled the staff out pretty nicely. And I think they'll all fit in very well and make us a better team. But yeah, I th tell me what you thought of the offseason and the signings you made down below in the comments if you're still here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.